So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another student interview. We are here with Mr. Angelovich. Did I get it right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stefan Ange uh, Ange uh, Angelovich, there we go. Um, yes. So, yeah, I'm excited to get into this. Um, we have a long background together. I think we've known each other for, what, like three years? Yeah, something like that. Two, three years, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, probably like two, yeah, two, and a, two, two and a half issues. Two and a half, two and a half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a long time. It's been a long but, time, yeah. But long story short, um, you know, you've come through Six Figure SMA, you've been to Meridian Mastermind, then AI, now Copy-Based Agency. And yeah. Uh, yeah, over the past two years, you've just, I mean, no other way to say it, <laughs> say it than just killed it with your agency. So you want to tell them a little bit about yourself, uh, who you serve, uh, what market, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, sure. First of all, I want to say a pleasure being here, Ivan. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to invite me over here. I've been watching a couple of the student interviews and I was so excited when you shot me a message like, oh, would you want to do an interview? <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do this. Uh, so yeah, uh, anyhow, my name is Stefan, 23 years old. I'm based in the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know if I'm the first person based from the Netherlands that you're doing an interview with. I think potentially, yeah. No, I think, yeah. yeah. Well, Pleasure once again. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I've had my agency for about two to three years, I would say. And I, um, yeah, it's been, it's been going up and down, contractions, expansions all over the place. Um, and I don't know, can I give like a background story immediately? Yeah, yeah go for it, go for it. My agency and everything is awesome. No, so as, two, three as years much as ago, possible. Awesome, great, great, great. So basically, I started out three to four years ago, um, kind of in the entrepreneur space, watching Gary Vaynerchuk, like thinking that I needed to post like, 50 stories a day on my Instagram and post like all kinds of different stuff, watching Tony Robbins and all those kinds of people. Um, but then I quickly realized like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this blogging stuff. I'm, I'm doing this Instagram posting stuff, but I'm not getting anything in return. So that's when I actually found Eman and a couple of other different entrepreneurs. But with him, I was like, okay, this dude is 16, 17 years old. Um, he's at a crib in, in Spain with a lot of girls sitting in a Jaguar <laughs> from the ad. And then I watched like, I was like, okay, I'm interested. Let, let me see a little bit more. So I, I, I dug deep and, and found a lot of information what he was doing. So I was like, okay, this social media marketing thing sounds interesting. Let me give it a shot. Let me try it out. Uh, ended up buying, like enrolling into six, uh, six figures from May back, uh, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, this is the most fucking amazing thing that I've ever seen in my life. I need to do this. Uh, and then kind of it, it sparked kind of the flame for myself. I then started, I think, two and a half years ago uh, in May, I think May 2018 uh, is when I first like really started with it. I was already building it up, uh, but I started with it and um, that's where I'm at right now. So two, three years down later down the line, I'm sitting here uh, in an interview with you and uh, it's, it's been a journey, man. I have to say it's been, it's been a long time, uh, but I've been chipping away at it every single day and still doing as it is for today. Uh, but it's funny to see um, if you just keep on doing the thing that you want to do and set your goals and just align everything else, uh, everything else will just fall, fall in place for yourself. So it's been funny to see how the journey has, uh, has gone so far. Mm. Could you get a little bit more uh, specific on how your agency has morphed? Because I feel as though a lot of agency owners don't mm. realize, at least when they start, that like you're probably going to go through a few different iterations of your agency, a few different iterations of the sort of niches you work with, as well as potentially even a few different iterations of like the sort of client you want to work with. Initially, the sort of client you think you want may not be three years down the line, the sort of client that, that you're looking to attract. Sure. Yeah. To give you like a uh, sort of perspective of how I started. So just like I said, two and a half years ago, I started uh, setting everything up. Uh, didn't have a clue as to what I needed to do. Uh, I remember I had a script, like a sales script. And I was, I knew like a, a, a woman who had a e-commerce business who was an acquaintance of mine, uh, who I've also done some work with before I started with the, the like the marketing agency and everything else. And I, I ended up hitting her up with my partner back in the day. And I was like, yo, Natasha, like it's, it was my first contact. And she was like, oh yeah, sure. Let's do a meeting. I was like, oh yeah, I would like to do a meeting with you. See if you're a potential client with me. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Uh, so I sat down where I remembered this, like, like vividly remembered this. I was sitting down at her. I was reading like the entire script out of the top of my head. I remembered everything. And I said like, yes. Yeah, so, by the way, um, <laughs> by the way how, how many coffees do you go through in that meeting? I don't know, dude. I was on some serious, <laughs> serious shit back in the day. Because, <laughs> dude, honestly, like, this is just one thing I always find funny in Holland. Because I, I, I signed quite a few clients in Holland in 2017. You yeah. cannot have a meeting with someone without having four coffees. Is a coffee when you sit down. 
a hat, like a, a quarter break, another quarter break, and then a coffee right before you leave. But sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, it's true. No, no, no. It was, I, I was on some serious shit. So now I'm only doing like two coffees in a day max. But back in the day, I was mm. completely obliterating the entire coffee machine. Anyhow, different story. Um, so I was sitting down with her and I was saying like, all right, so I think you would be a good fit uh, for my agency. She was looking at me like, Stefan, I, I like know you. Like, what the fuck are you on about? So I was like, okay, so that will be, <laughs> that will be a thousand euros for you. And she was like, okay, okay, let's, let's just do it. I was like, okay, you can sign a contract here. And it was like the weirdest shit ever. But anyhow, I uh, ended up signing my first person who I had contact with for, for 1,000 euros back in the day. So I was like, oh, fuck, this shit is working. I need to do this. So I ended up uh, <laughs> then like expanding into five clients. I had three restaurants. Uh, I had a yoga studio. I had uh, like a gym. I had her as an e-commerce brand. So I had like six, seven clients with a partner doing like five to six K within my first like two months. So it was, I was like, okay, this shit is working. Only I'm not left with almost any profit <laughs> because it's going to my partner and I need to reinvest it back into my business. So what I noticed also with a lot of starting agency owners is that they, um, especially when they start, at least if you have the right connections already beforehand, is you, I've, you have two things that are going to happen, contraction or expansion. And for me, it was expansion. Like I already got five, six clients, but for, in order for me to grow with my agency, it, there needed to be like contraction for that as well. So I ended up losing like, I ended up, I think going to the mastermind back in the day, I think it was in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then he told me like, okay, like focus on the restaurant niche, cut your partner, do everything that you need to do. Uh, and then I, so I cut like three clients, ended up leaving myself only with one or two clients. And then like expanding once again, picking the real estate niche, getting up to seven, eight clients. And that, that is the niche that I'm still in to this day. Um, so actually last October, October, 2019, uh, hit it my first uh, six figure month, which was around like 11, 12 K, uh, with six, seven clients all paying me between 1000 to 2000 euros. And what I decided in March a month ago is to once again, contract, uh, go to the U S market, uh, actually ended up losing a, a couple of Dutch clients. So already contracting once again, and now expanding into the U S market and building my personal brand uh, authority niche uh, over there. So that's kind of been mm. the journey. Uh, yeah, I love that you mentioned that because it, it is a very cyclical uh, process when it comes to having an agency is kind of when, kinda, when it comes to agency and client load as well as expenses, like a lot of times you, you just get a little fat and then you just got to trim the fat and, and you got to trim yeah. the, you get a little fat and you get a little complex a lot of times as well. So, and that's okay. And that's good uh, at, at certain times because you're, you're pushing the boundary. Um, and then you you assess what the results of that are, and then from there you trim down and and you get more streamlined. Um, so yeah, I, I I love that you mentioned that. Now, uh, with your real estate clients, what are you doing to keep retention up? Yeah, that's a good one. So these are now you know for some businesses it can be really difficult times for especially for for the real estate niche at least in some states in the U S it can be difficult, but for all my Dutch I, I, clients. I, 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 I want to say outside, also outside of everything that's going on in the world. I'm saying like even like four or five months ago, just as a agency serving real estate uh, clients, as a general whole, like what are you guys doing to, to make sure the retention is high? Yeah, sure. So basically, it's really simple. Provide them with really good results so they don't have nothing to, to complain about. That's basically it. So if we deliver the right results, which is people want to sell their house specifically in the Netherlands, um, I've talked to them and I, I ask them like, okay, what do you want from us? Like, what do you want from us as an agency? And they told me like, we would want more people want to sell their house. Um, and if we can achieve that, if you can give me like between five to 10 people want to sell their house every single month and let me stay ahead of my competitors by doing simple like Facebook ads and some email marketing on the side as well, then we can get there. So that's basically what I've been doing, providing them with the, with the right results and actually uh, setting up the entire systems for them with the lead conversion. So what I mean with that is, actually not just sending them the leads, but also making sure that the leads get nurtured, qualified, and that once the lead hits their CRM or database, for the people watching it, they don't know what a CRM is, uh, where we have the pipeline full, um, meaning all the people that fill in their information, they get sent through to them once we know that they're a qualified lead. So we actually take matters into our own hands when it comes to actually qualifying and nurturing the leads. So that's kind of been mm. our process into helping them even more uh, by not just like, oh, I've sent you 150, 200 leads, 250 leads, um, and them not signing anyone. We want to actually help them with more stuff. So that's 
Mm. That's kind of been the retention strategy. So two, two questions uh, that spawned from that. Number one is you, you mentioned seller leads. Are your uh, mm. clients looking ex pretty much exclusively for seller leads? In the Netherlands, yes. In the Netherlands, yes. Uh, but it almost always depends on the client. If a person is just starting, then they would want, they need someone, right, to sell their house because if, if they don't have anyone wanting to sell their house, they can't have buyers if they don't have mm -hmm. listings. So, so it depends on the clients, but in most cases for the Dutch clients that I've had, it's mostly uh, seller leads because what, if you bring a seller lead, usually they'll also want to buy. So you have two birds with yeah. one stone. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there you go. D d double whammy, double commission right there. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that you mentioned, and that's kind of what I was hoping that you would mention, is the lead um, conversion process and nurturing the leads mm. and this and that, because at a certain point, I think when you first start your agency, this is my recommendation to everyone, is when you first start your agency, you need to have very clear boundaries and expectations of what your role is and isn't. And as you, sure. and, that, and that's a way as a beginner slash intermediate agency owner to protect yourself if your client is like, oh, this, like, especially when it, look, it's a little different when it comes to e-commerce and info product because like the KPI that you're optimizing for is, purchase conversion value. Like there's, you can't run away from that. But when it comes to lead generation, the, the KPI that you're um, optimizing for is the actual leads brought in, or at least like the end of funnel, whether that's like schedule call, whether that's lead, like whatever the purest number you, you have, like right before you pass the baton off to them. So with beginner and intermediate uh, agency owners, I recommend that you like protect that barrier. Once you get into more advanced uh, level, it's a matter of like, okay, you can complain that like, you brought your client, your, your client quality leads and you can complain that they're not following up and nurturing them themselves or they're not doing enough to follow up quickly. And it's like, you can, you can complain and cry or you can just fucking do it. Like, like take, take it on board and keep the client. Like one sure. protects your ego, one protects your, your bottom line and your retention rate. So uh, can you just get a little more specific in, uh, as to what, like maybe before with your agency when you were just focused on leads to now where you're focusing yeah. on leads and actually making sure that uh, they're nurtured? Yeah, sure. So basically when it comes down to when I had the restaurants and the yoga studios, I was like, okay, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So I was doing content creation, social media management, all those kind of stuff. And I, and I noticed like most, most of us have started with that. But for me, it was like, okay, I can schedule 30 content posts and then you'll get like a fancy Instagram or a fancy Facebook. And they were like, okay, well, I don't care. I want clients. So then I quickly realized that was a moment that I realized like, okay, I need to be bringing them in clients. And how can I do that through like these online marketing thing that I'm, that I'm doing. And then I transitioned into Facebook ads and doing all that kind of stuff. So basically for now it's, um, it was that transition with the, like the contraction that I had into getting into real estate that I realized, okay, they only care about the results. They don't care about any different shit. Uh, they only care about the results and I need to do my best to provide them with the results. And if I can do that, I'm going to be on top of my game. If I don't do that, I'm going to screw up and I did screw up a little bit. Uh, but I practiced that. So in the beginning when I sent them just the leads and I was like, okay, so, uh, I sent you like 50 leads this month. They were like, okay, but we, I didn't get a client and I'm like, okay, okay. I need to, I need to do something about this. So I was, I was thinking like, okay, how can I help them as well? So that was beginning last year, beginning of 2019. I was like, okay, let me, let me try out and help them also with their database. Let me try and ask them like, what's the main uh, issue for yourself right now? Because the issue wasn't getting more leads. The issue was actually following up and staying in front of those leads because a person doesn't want to like sell her, you know, for yourself as well. You know, like a person doesn't want to like sell um, every single year or every single month. They want to do it usually over a time span of, let's say five to eight years, depending on the area that you're in. So with that in mind, I was like, okay, if I send you 100 leads and two of them want to do it right now, want to sell or buy right now, 98 of them might potentially do that in the future. So by framing it that way to them, they understood like, okay, so he's bringing me those leads, but they are, almost all like qualified and they're good. And I didn't have this before. So by just doing that and framing it that way, they understood. Mm, that's gold. That is, that is gold because that's something we mirror very closely with our info product clients. It's like, mm. okay, yes. Um, you know, like, let's say hypothetically we brought, brought them in a thousand leads. Yes. Only 40 of those purchased your, your program. Yeah. But we still got 960 there who are in your email. And like, I, I shout but before I used, I used to not, I was like, all right, well that, that's not my circle of concern. Now I shout at my clients if they're not doing email marketing. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. you literally got 960 leads right there. Like, and, and, and the, the best part is it's all bottom line because you've already yeah. paid for those leads either way. 
So any extra ounce of efficiency that you can get from, from it, any extra like any extra customer or client that you can get from that, it's it's all bottom line. So um, True. yeah, I, I, I even, as you said, even just that simple framing, which is they're mm -hmm. like, oh okay, this is a hundred leads or whatever, but it's not, it, it's only converted to X amount of actual uh, clients for now. Except for now. And, and I think exactly. especially in a, in a place, um, in an arena like our, for real estate agents where it's like, mm. it's, a, it's a big thing, you know, like sometimes, you know, first of all, the, for everything to clear through escrow and this and that, and the actual process of selling a house takes months, sometimes over a year, as well yeah. as like, as you said, not everyone's looking to sell their house right now. But when the time comes, they'll, they'll know who they want to sell it with. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's kind of the take, like, actually making sure that, that the clients are aware of that because most of them only think like, oh, I, don't, I, I wanna do it now, I wanna do it now, which is great, short term is great, but you also gotta have a long term vision, which is something I also try to implement with them and, and tell them like, that we are here for the long term, like we are a team, like we are here to help you, like we are not here to like get some money and, <laughs> and move the fuck out, like we are here, you can see us as an extension of your own real estate agency and mm. that's kind of how I mm. build that up with them. Mm. Yeah. As an actual partner. Um, yeah, exactly. So, um, you, you mentioned just even, even just that little, uh, the, the, the way that you frame it, that mm -hmm. kind of puts clients at ease, but then from a more technical perspective, once that lead comes in through Facebook, uh, what, what are you guys doing mainly primarily uh, native lead gen ads on Facebook? Or are you uh, using a funnel or what does that actual process look like? Uh, usually what we do is we just use a uh, kind of a in, for Dutch clients we have a funnel where they get uh, they, the valuation but that is actually done through a, another like uh, marketing agency who have set that up all in over the over the Netherlands so we thought like why not why create our own when we can use theirs so we kind of have a small partnership with them uh, we still blow them out of the water <laughs> but anyhow uh, in that case they had their landing page already set up so I was like okay why create another one when we can do that so in that instance, we send people to get a free home valuation because if they have their valuation, then afterwards they get sent to the pipeline of the realtor, which is something we create. And once now they, that once valuation, they, it, that, that's, that's done automatically to the that's software. Automatically. That's automatically. Completely on autopilot. Completely on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And uh, they fill in their information. They can all, also say like, oh, I want to sell at my house. I want to buy my house. I want to uh, adjust my mortgage. I want to do something else or, or anything else. Or, or I'm just curious. So once that happens, once they get like the information of the order free valuation based on the homes that look like their home, so it's like a free test that they can do. Once they get there, uh, we've actually done like, I don't know if I can get into the nitty gritty kind of stuff, like talking about yeah, that's, any, any, and yeah. Oh, as in like, oh, get it, get as granular as you want. I prefer yeah. it. Just also whatever you're willing to uh, reveal any of your secrets. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm completely open. I'm an open book. So, um, <laughs> once they, once they get in, like we, we make sure that we pixel them. So when, once they get through, get through, we actually pixel them as in someone who did, who did the test. So we have that also like the, the warm, warmer pixel. That we can then use so to, when you, to target because yeah, you because you mentioned custom conversion standard event. Uh, what were you going to mention about that? Yeah. No, I wanted to mention about that is the when the people get into the value valuation, the free valuation they can get. Once they like fill in their information and they get to the thank you page, we actually make sure that we're also like analytically setting that up correctly because we want to mm -hmm. see yeah. who is coming on there and who's leaving without filling in their information. Mm -hmm. So we track that. But anyhow, uh, once they get fill in their information, so they fill in their information they get sent into a CRM that we created, which is like where all the people who have filled in their information get sent to. Then we have all that information, which can sometimes be a lot, uh, sometimes up to like 50 to, to 70 people who are getting into that CRM completely on automatic. Uh, we're sending them through to Zapier. So that's something we're utilizing as a software to send them through. And once they hit there, once they come to the CRM, I have an in-house sales team. So someone who is calling the leads from Monday to Friday. And uh, once they call the leads, they qualify them and they send them to another board and we use Trello as a CRM. So they send them to another board and once they hit the second board, once they're qualified, then an email gets sent to someone who's working at the real estate agency so they can actually plan in a meeting. So the only thing they need to do is actually pick up the phone, plan a meeting and close the transaction. Mm, amazing. Process. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's pretty much as, uh, I mean, you've made it about as easy as humanly possible for, for your realtors. So um, with this person who's, uh, who's um, uh, actually calling these leads and, and trying to qualify them. Um, how does the, the payment structure work there? Are they just working on an hourly basis or? No, I pay them um, one, one euro that is right now. 
uh, one euro per really per called person. So not like a voicemail that they got or anything else, like a, a real conversation that they had with a person. I pay them one euro and I tell them to note it down in Trello because you can then add like a circle with your name on it or something like that, that you're a member. So if they note it down, I'm doing a checkup every single month and then I pay them out based on uh, how many leads they, they called every single month. So between all your clients, how many, uh, how many people do you think they're actually uh, calling and reaching? So right now we have, I have had two people calling just uh, mm -hmm. for the real estate that I had. They're doing a tremendous job to edit. So that, that is amazing, but they're calling on a daily basis within an hour or two hours. It's usually what they're doing. They, they're calling, I would say between 20 to 40 uh, people. And not yeah, all of them, awesome. you, you, gotta, you gotta see, like not all of them are like qualified leads. So some of them get voicemails, right? So yeah, yeah, of course. All right, that's awesome. So how much are you charging uh, on average to your clients? So it's with the Dutch clients, it's between 1,000, like 1,000 was my minimum. I started off uh, one and a half years ago with 500 or fees like that. Uh, but then I, I slowly started recognizing like, okay, all the, I wanna say, not wanna say shitty agencies, but all the like, lower class agencies were charging a lot less. So I was like, okay, why not charge them higher? Because if someone sells their house through them, it can get them a minimum of 3000, depending on the commission basis and everything else. So I was like, okay, let's just charge 1000. Makes sense for them. And that worked out fine. So it's between 1000 and 2000 in the Dutch market. Now with the transition to the US market, it's the lowest one I, I'm going to be charging is 2K. So 2K yeah. upwards, but also depending on the situation, because if someone can't handle that or can do that, I'm happy to, to yeah. also get them on board for 1500 or something like that. Yeah. I was about to say, look, considering how uh, everything from actually generating the leads to nurturing them. I mean, look, yeah, I think yeah, between one to 2000, you're, you're undercharging, but then again, I guess potentially that's the Dutch market. And I guess that's why you pivoted to the American market. Um, okay. So that makes sense. So are you actually delivering the results yourself? Or are you going to media buyer? No, I have someone. I have someone. Actually, my my ex partner. <laughs> I've done some mm. some thing, some things also with him. So he's he's now doing all the media buying for myself. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So how are you generating most of your leads at the moment for your own agency? For my own agency, I'm doing mostly like uh, outreach myself, so outbound. And I have two. I'm just looking at my whiteboard because I've set it up every, everything yesterday. I have two appointment setters right now. Uh, one appointment center was killing it in the Dutch market, making cold calls for realtors, getting me 12 meetings within a month. I think I also mentioned that to you, Iman, in the Q&A. Uh, but now he's having some struggles also with transitioning to the US market. So I'm looking at a couple of different strategies also to see like that. But I have two appointment setters, meaning people who uh, do the outreach for me based on their own accounts. And they're doing completely outreach. They set up the meeting. They actually have the first call, the warm-up call with the person, 10 to 15 minutes before they send them to me to close mm -hmm. them. So that's how I'm getting most of my clients through LinkedIn, Facebook, by starting a conversation with them, with the, the potential realtors, just asking them a couple of questions. How's the market going with everything happening in the world right now? How's, how's your business going and everything else? And that's what my appointment setters are doing and myself as well. I'm pushing the limits. But uh, next to that, once, they, once I sign them, I have a media buyer in place who can take care of the rest. So basically, I just do the meeting, which I'm also looking. I know, Iman, you said like, that's something you can't outsource them. I'm looking... I think a way also to outsource that, but perhaps we can talk about that later on. But what, to outsource that, the that's sales? Kind of yeah. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, trust me. Why not? Why not? I, I, I make this point all the time. It's because like, look, technically, can you do it? Yes. Like technically, can you generate the leads through Facebook ads, do a one call close, and then never show up to any client meetings again after that? Yes, you can, because that's what I did all of 2019. Like 2019, I pushed the fucking limit. 80% of our clients came in through the case study funnel. It, I never, okay, I think maybe like one client, I had a two call close, but it was, and that was only uh, if there was a partner involved. Never, ever uh, had a two call close. It was also one, uh, one call close. Then I went on the, so I, I, would, I would spend anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes closing the client. I would spend 30 minutes on that initial strategy session. Uh, you know, introducing the team and after that, that uh, and, and everything else. And then I would never show up mm -hmm. to any client calls. And that was the expectation. Like, and yes, I was still a presence in the Slack channel. Like, yes, if they, you know, at Eman me, I would respond. But my point, the reason I say this is because just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I have no way to tangibly quantify this, but I feel as though my retention could have been even higher if I was more of an imposing figure. Um, mm -hmm. 
it, it's really cool to know that like I literally automated everything. The only thing that I didn't automate was sales. And I know, and, and Danny's been itching. Danny is basically Danny wants to, we're hiring a second media buyer now. Um, mm -hmm. So our client capacity will go up to around like 20. So Danny actually wants to close the clients now. Uh, and I'm like, it, it, and if I get that in place, that means that we're generating the least two ads. I'm not closing them. I'm not delivering the services. Obviously my team's delivering it. And potentially if, if Danny closes it, closes the clients, I probably don't even need to show up to the strategy session even because yeah. he's, he'll just be the chief marketing executive uh, officer at that point. Um, so my point is, in my opinion, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So what we're doing is we're moving to uh, two call close the strategy this year. Uh, once again, all of 80% of these are coming in through uh, Facebook ads. The rest are going to come in through appointment setters or referrals. Danny's mm -hmm. taking the initial 15 minute call uh, to qualify them. And then I'm doing the second call to close. Um, and the way that I see it is, let me, let me ask you actually, what is your max capacity a month? Like how, how many extra clients could you onboard a month? Do you think? So it comes down like for the calculation that I did with, uh, with the clusters and everything else, it's between five to seven, seven at the max, I would say with the current team that I have in place. A additional a month. Additional a month. Yeah. Okay. So, right now. so, so for you to close. Okay. So, and what's your closing percentage? Closing percentage is between, I would say 20, depending also on, on like the per people that I'm speaking with, because not all of them are like qualified warm leads. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say between 25, 30, something like that. 25 to 30. So the way that I see it is, okay, so for you to close uh, five clients a month, you're going to need to, and by the way, five clients additional, and you're doing 2000 minimum. So to add an extra 10,000 a month, not, not 10,000 a month in terms of your bar, like additional recurring revenue and you do a three month minimum. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing a three, like you're guaranteed at least three months and I'm sure your retention, you quite clearly, you know what you're doing on the service delivery aspects. Your retention is, I, I honestly don't see it less than six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months. So you got, you got a, you got a good retention rate. So look, for you to close five clients and onboard five clients a month, you would have to have what 20 to 25 calls. So yeah. 20 to, so, yeah. so basically 20 to 25 days of the month, you need to have a 45 minute call. So for me, it's like, first of all, if you put uh, pit it off to someone else, if you get someone else to close it, once again, you can, mm -hmm. but your, your, your closing percentage will go down a hundred percent. Hands down. For sure. For close, sure. Cause, cause you're the, you're the founder, you know, um, no, sure. no, no one will ever have a higher closing percentage than you as the founder, as the person who obviously owns the company, as the one who uh, commands the authority, the respect, the one who's showcasing and talking in the case study, the one who is plastered everywhere. Um, as well as I don't think anyone will be able to sell it better than you because this isn't that this world isn't selling a $200 software or like selling like a, a $300 product or whatever. It's like, it can get technical sometimes on the call. Most of the time it actually doesn't get super technical, which, which I also think a lot of people have misconceptions about like you and I both know that a lot of times you don't really go into the nitty gritty. But for the times that you do on the actual sales call, I mean, damn, you need someone who knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, not just sure. your, your bog standard sales guy. So for me, I think that like, dude, for you to have 20, like Monday to Friday, for you to have one call a day, like what other more high leverage thing is there? I mean, if you yeah, have sure, four I, calls a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like, I want to, I want to push this shit to the limit. I want to see like how, how no, 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 you, you, no, yeah. no, you, no, you, no, you, Okay, as I said, just because you can doesn't mean you should. What I would love to see you do and what we're doing and what we're doing this year actually is, so, so as I said, we're having Danny do the first 15 minute call. Another thing that we're going to try to do is go straight to book call and then on calendar, uh, on calendar you can just reassign or the same, same thing mm -hmm. on acuity mm -hmm. scheduling, reassign. So anyone who is doing 50K a month or less goes to Kieran. Anyone who's doing 50K a month or more will get reassigned to me. So mm -hmm. we were also thinking of doing it that way or, or Kieran or Danny will close or potentially Max. We're, we're still figuring out with that model. If first I'm starting off with a 15 minute uh, wedge call with uh, Danny and then it goes to me sure. at qualify. But as so my point is, I think you pushing it, I think you challenging yourself this year. And obviously, you know, this is stuff we've been talking about in copy paste agency on Q and yeah. together. Like, dude, yeah. I'd love to see you have fucking five meetings a day. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I'd love to see you on board 10 to 20 clients a month. And by the way, that is so much harder, not, not in terms of sales. I'm not saying in terms of lead generation sales, that's not the tough bit. When it, when you're onboarding 10 to 20 new clients a month, 
then the, your nightmare is on the operational side. So I'd love sure. to see you fucking have three to four meetings a day. Like that's what I'd love to see you do. Um, and, and be able to cope with that in terms of your service delivery. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing because honestly, I've, like I said, the two appointment setters and then I'm still doing the, the outreach myself. So through Facebook, LinkedIn and all those other stuff. Yeah. But uh, once I get, I, I told the team, like once I get like three clients, four clients, I'm going to position myself out of that. And then I'm going to like observe it with an, a bird's eye view. Like, okay, what, what steps am I going to take? But that's something, something has been lingering in my mind. I was like, okay, that's, that's potentially something I could be trying. So we'll see how it goes. Well, as in like uh, getting someone else to close the sales for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to try it, but I think tr- I think should- try it. I think I think yeah. try it. I I think you'll have the same realization that I have I had last year with the not coming uh, to client check-in calls. Like mm-hmm. literally after that first strategy session, I would never be on any of the client check-in calls. As said, my yeah. presence would be still there and felt. Uh, it's not like I was just like totally abandoned it. Uh, abandon them and also that that was the expectation like danny and kieran you're having the calls with them um mm. but as i said i think you'll come to a realization which is you can but it doesn't mean you should but um <laughs> but i guess the, but but that's a cool thing it's like it, with with a an agency is a very um i i i almost want to refrain from saying simple business model but it's not there aren't it's not as multifaceted as like say for example i speaking from experience having an e-commerce line uh, speaking yeah. from experience, having an education company, it's really like get clients, uh, like, like generate leads, sell them, uh, and get really good service. Like it's really down to three things and like generating yeah. leads. You're almost at that point where like, you don't have to do it yourself because you've got two appointment setters, right? Um, selling, as you said, you could you test out getting someone else to do it for you. And then service delivery, you've already sure. got automated and you've got your team doing it. So it's, yeah, um, I, will, I will never, I will never forget that you, you told me at the mastermind 2018, like there's only two things you need to do, which is the sales and the service delivery. If you do those on par, you'll do everything. That's something that's been always in my mind. Like, okay, it's, this is such an amazing business model. So I just want to say, I'm really thankful that you posi- positioned yourself the way you did like two, three years ago and still doing as of for right now to make people aware of the opportunities that they can take through your education company and the things that you're doing. Because mm-hmm. honestly, it transformed the, the, my life, all the things that I'm doing. And also for, for the people following me and then following you and everything else, it's, 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 it's been enlightening to see how everything has been turning out and, and, and going along the way. Of course, there's been ups and downs, especially last year for myself speaking personally, but um, it's, uh, I'm definitely really thankful for what you're doing at this moment and what you've been doing too. Because if I didn't see that video, if I didn't get to know you, like who knows where I would <laughs> end up, right? <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Dave. So um, last question, what is the rest of 2020 looking like for you with your agency? Yeah, so now we're pushing into the limits, man. Like honestly, there's, I'm, I'm chipping away every single day, uh, working my ass off with my team, with the media buyers. So my goal is to hit 25K profit with the US market, so just with the US market, because I feel like it's a different niche that I'm like transitioning into. So setting all the systems in place, getting my case study launched, getting everything else launched, my team in place, and then getting those clients on board, it will be easy. So 25K profit, that's kind of the aim, uh, aim for, for this year with the agency. Boom. Knowing your, um, knowing your prowess when it comes to lead gen and sales and knowing, um, your attention detail when it comes to the service delivery aspect of things. Uh, 25 is, is a very low target for you. I have, I have zero, uh, I, I have zero uh, doubts that, that you're going to be able to hit that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. I've, I've heard some people also say like, Oh, 25, that's actually low. I was like, let's just first see how that is. Let's going get to that first. Get there. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's get to that first. Let's get to that first. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, dude, this has been, this has been awesome. Like I, I the, the, you know, I, I always mention with the student interviews, like before anything else, this is, I, I've tried so hard to make sure that these are so different from other like student interviews. It's like, mm-hmm, oh, what's mm-hmm. your best piece of advice? Like invest in yourself. Like I like to fucking hound the person that I'm talking to uh, and really get into their mind and really just get them to reveal as many other secrets as, as humanly possible. So I sure, feel as though, sure. I feel as though I've, I've done a decent job here and I feel as though uh, I'm just very grateful that I, uh, you're able to um, share as much with uh, the audience as you were. Sure. Thanks so much. Pleasure being here. I hope the viewers got some golden nuggets uh, out of this conversation. Cheers.